Hey, what is up guys? Today we're gonna work on the uh, mapping of the joystick a little bit more. So pretty much put the, put the other inputs on that joystick as well. So we can now spawn towers, we can now uh, swap the tower selection by clicking on these two inputs. They also work on the keyboard like we used to. And we're now able to spawn them and even pop the menu, do all that kind of good stuff. And that's, uh, yeah, so that's going to be pretty much it. I've also just started a wave using the back button. Alright guys, so without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so I'm quickly looking through our scripts right now and we do not need any changes in the camera folder. In fact, we only needed one change in the camera folder and that was what we did last episode. So we went inside of the camera motor and we changed um, the update a little bit so it takes in the input manager dot secondary axis instead. Now, as for the combat folder, we do not need any changes as of right now, but we'll come back later on to uh, map some buttons, you know, the, the buttons on the spell bar, we'll map that to some of the inputs on the controller. Now, as for the game folder, we do not take in any inputs, um, not even in the wave. Right here, there is the function start wave that we usually start using the K key on the keyboard, but that is being... Um, that's being handled from somewhere else, and I believe it is the level manager takes care of all of that. Okay, let's check the hub folder and the teleporter that we do not need. Now the base motor doesn't take any input, but the player motor does, and I think that we did change that as well right here, input manager main horizontal. Okay, so motor is not going to be uh, having any changes. Now projectile, that's out of the question. System build mode okay now I know we we're gonna have one in that one for sure but let's go ahead and open up the build mode script and inside of the build mode we do take inputs somewhere so let's go check in the update because that's pretty much where you you get the input we've created a function that is called pull input so I will select it press F12 and it's going to send me down here in the script so here we are in the pull input function of the build mode and uh, down here we get these two inputs. So if input dot get key down key code Q and input dot get key down key code E, if these are pressed, then we go ahead and um, change the selection. Now I was looking at my controller, and we don't really have a key that does that just yet. So what I was thinking about doing is uh, create two more inputs for the controller. And they would pretty much be used on these two little uh, bumper they call, I believe. So the left bumper and the right bumper. Now they're really hard to see because of the lighting, but oh, if I go like this, they're little buttons right on top of the controller. Another one in the backs, but here they are. So that's what I'll be using um, for this new input. And as for the keyboard, we can simply use the K and not the K, the Q and the E like we had before. Okay, so I am going to go back inside of the Unity, go on Edit, Project Settings, Input, and I am going to create ta, 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 one, two, three, four. Let's go for four new inputs. Should we do four? Yeah, let's go for four. We could be going for axis and say, okay, this left bumper means it's minus one, and this right bumper means it is one, but um, it's going to be a little bit hard when it comes down to just knowing when this button is pressed and not when it's hold. So we're like, we need this to act as a get button down and not a get button. So that's why I'm creating more than um, two axes. So let's go ahead and change the first one. The first one is going to be K underscore and now we need to give it a name for the uh, selection left or selection minus. So we're gonna do left, now K underscore minus. Yeah, I mean, that could work. So K underscore minus and the positive button for that is going to be Q. Now that's a little bit uh, counter initiative, but that's how it's going to work. <laughs> right, so since this is a button, we have to change the type for key or mouse button. And we're also going to add the gravity uh, thousand and the insensitivity thousand. Just below that, we will do J underscore minus, which is pretty much going to be if we go on Google and find our Xbox 360 controller mapping. 
then it is number 4 and the one on the right is number 5. So positive button is joystick button 4 and uh, this is also a key or mouse button. Well this is considered as a key or mouse button but let's keep going and do K underscore plus and that would be E sensitivity to 8000 sensitivity I mean gravity to 8000 and then sensitivity as well we forgot to do it on the joystick so I'll go back here gravity is a thousand sensitivity is also 8000 so the last one is going to be J underscore plus and the positive button is joystick button 5 let's make sure yeah that's 5 gravity 8000 Sensitivity 8000. This is a key or mouse button. Let's make sure that everybody has that as well. Key or mouse button and good. So we should have these two new inputs. Now we're going to put them inside of a button. So let's go in our input manager. Let's copy paste two of these. So I'll take this, copy it twice, like so. The first one is going to be the plus button. And second one is going to be the minus button. So over here we do J underscore plus and K underscore plus. J underscore minus and K underscore minus. Right. Let's go back inside of our build mode and right here, instead of doing input dot get key down key code Q, we'll do input manager dot uh, minus button same thing on this side input manager dot plus button and now as for the spawn the tower button let's go ahead and put the um, input manager dot interact button in there so interact button like so and we should be done for the build mode so let's go back and we get an error here let's go check this out so in the trigger axis, we never return a default value. So let's just go ahead and do a return zero zero. Okay, so we can go back now. Um, so build mode is done. Combat text manager. I don't believe this takes in any inputs. Uh, it does not input manager. Well, that's a little bit obvious. Now level manager probably does take some input. So let's go ahead and check the update. So in input, um, not input, but in the update, we have this input that get key down K, which is a key that we do not use most of the time because it's it should be a really far away key, something that we, you know, we don't like to uh, press too often because it's the one that starts the whole level and it should be really far on the keyboard. So K was a good place. And when I'm looking at my controller, the key I'd like to use for this action, so spawning a wave, is this little one next to the uh, the Xbox sign, so the back button on the controller. What I'll be doing is I will be creating that back button. So I'll go inside of edit, project settings, input. We're getting a little bit used to that now. And we're going to create two new uh, buttons. The first one is going to be K underscore back. And the positive button for that is going to be K. Now gravity is fine, sensitivity is fine. The little settings down here are also fine. As for the joystick, we'll be doing G, I mean J, underscore back, and that would be joystick button six. So let's go ahead and just change that for six. These settings down here are okay, and we're gonna go inside of the input manager now. So where is it at? Right here, and below the minus button, I will do public bool back button. And it's the same thing as always, so J underscore back and K underscore back. Right. Now we can go back inside the level manager and change this for input manager dot back button. Alright, let's keep checking so we do not have any inputs in there. And in there either. So that one is done. 
Um, let's keep looking at the uh, span manager. Span manager might have something. Let's just make sure. Okay. Um, we had this to manually spawn some players, but I really like that comment over here that says temporary. So pretty much we're going to take that and just dump it. We do not need it anymore. Good, that's one thing done. Let's keep going and check for the UI manager. Now the UI manager has right here the get key down escape. That was to spawn the menu. Now we do not have a key for that on the joystick. So we're going to go ahead and create one. That's going to be the start button. So this guy over here, joystick button 7. So we're going to go inside of edit, project settings, input, and we'll do 44. We're, we're starting to get a lot of inputs in that game, but that's okay. So K underscore start, which is going to be the escape button. Settings down here are fine. And now J underscore start. And the positive button is joystick button 7. Again, let's go back inside the input manager. Copy this. We have the back button. Now we have the start button. We change these two strings and here we go. UI manager now takes in the input manager dot start button. Right, and it doesn't have any other thing, I believe. Let's just make sure that we have nothing else in the update, so. Nope, not here, and we are good to go. Okay, now as for the towers, we do not control anything in the towers, so that's a good thing. And we, we should actually be done, so let's go take a look at our game. I am going to uh, show the controller at the same time, and we should be able to do the all the same action we had before in our game. So here is my jump. Now I'm trying to spawn the tower, so I click on this. I am in build mode, changing through the towers by pressing on my triggers. And we should be able to spawn one using the interact button. Now I think that is the X button in my case. So I'm going to go here, press X, and there we go. It spawned the tower. Now I'm going to change my tower for the arrow tower. Now a shock. And right, okay, so we have this. I'm going to stop the build mode. And let's play uh, a wave by pressing on back. Here we go, the wave is starting. And here we go, so that's wonderful actually. So we're off a really good start. Now the only thing we need to actually do is um, have some kind of way to navigate through our menu using some kind of selection of the button. Because right now, first thing, we, we have no means to actually click on uh, these two abilities we have in our ability bar, so we need to map that as well. But I'm still not quite sure how exactly we're going to be doing it. And um, the other thing I was talking about is whenever we win or we lose, we do get the menu popping up. So this menu here, but we have no means to click on it. And uh, that's something we'll have to cover really soon as well. But not in the next episode. I'm, I'm thinking about doing some art a little bit. So just starting to get some colors going on in this game. And uh, we, can, we can take care of that. We still have our keyboard. We still have our mouse we can play with. So... The input manager base is there, but of course we're going to be working with it throughout the rest of the game. So guys, thanks a lot for watching. That is going to be pretty much it for this episode. And again, if you enjoyed this video, if you learned something, please leave me a like. I really appreciate that. If you have any question or comment, you can always leave them in the comment section below. And I'll try to answer them as soon as possible. So thanks a lot for watching, and I will be seeing you in the next episode.